Good morning, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Hello, good morning. Beautiful day today. Very beautiful day today. Hope you are all doing well. Trusting upon the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Looking to him in all things. For he alone is your refuge. He alone is your strength. He alone is your hope. Well, going in one direction, the Lord led into another. Hence today, dear brethren, as always, please get your, uh-oh, <laughs> yeah, get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James Version, commonly referred to as and please turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures to Psalm 115. Today we are going to have an expository on Psalm 115. I am going to share with you the things that the Lord shared with me while reading Psalm 115, okay? Not every single verse is going to be touched upon, but a majority of them. So please, get your authorized version of the scriptures and follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at today, okay? Follow me along word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures we are going to be looking at. Follow me along. Keep me accountable. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove, okay? Check me out. Check me out. Okay? Like I said, we're just going to go over the things that our Lord shared with me personally while doing this. Um, uh, you can take it or leave it. <laughs> but let us get right at it. Okay? Psalm 115, beginning at verse 1. And right away, right away. The focal point, the focal point. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory, for thy mercy and for thy true sake. And he has exalted his word even above his own name. But look at that verse before we uh, get into some um, corresponding verses here. Look at that verse. Not unto us, not unto me, O Lord. Not unto us, not unto me, not unto us. But unto thy name give glory, for thy mercy and for thy true sake. Our Lord would much rather be merciful. He does not afflict willingly, but he, he delighteth in mercy. Okay, he delighteth in mercy. And what better picture of his mercy than for him to save a sinner who is chief, right? Ezekiel chapter 36. As I have told you before, you're going through some stuff. Um, I got a notification by a dear brother who, um, who left a comment in the previous video just just heart-wrenching but there again god glorifying not unto us not unto us O lord not unto us but unto thy name give glory for thy mercy and for thy truth's sake it's not about us ezekiel chapter 36 26 on the verse 32 check this out now you got to remember, doctrinally and dispensationally, the book of Ezekiel is written under the law, specifically onto the Jewish people. But to instruct us in righteousness, oh, there's a lot here. Verses 26 on to verse 32. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. Has that happened unto Israel today, as a nation? <laughs> no, no. Individually, yes. Nation, nationally, 
Israel, Israel following their God completely, our Lord Jesus Christ, God, our Father, it's not happening today. Individually, it can happen, yes. But as a nation, no. But a new heart also will I give, on, give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. Is that happening for Israel today? No, it is not. Those of us who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, do we have this going on? As we walk according to the scriptures? Yes. Yes. Okay. Instruction and in righteousness. Doctrinally, this is written for the Jewish people. Remember that. But to instruct us in righteousness, we come to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, call upon his name. We want to do what he says. I want to do what he says. What about you? I want to walk according to the doctrine written for me today and to learn from the Old Testament, to learn from the example given to us in Scripture. I want to walk according to a statute. What about you? Now, do we do it all the time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week? No, we don't. Not even Paul could do that. But see, we desire, we yearn for his precepts. We yearn to walk according to his ways. Those who are truly saved, though they may stumble, though you may stumble, though you may fall, at heart, you want to do what the Lord says. Like, like uh, in one of the comments uh, in the previous video, when you decide to disobey, when you decide, when you make the choice to do what is contrary to the Lord and ignore the scriptures and to give in to your temptation, and amen to this comment, do you realize that you're actually showing hate for the Lord? Yeah, roll that around in your head. That was that was a mwah. you know that was you know for the Church of the Living God that was a pricking comment. But for those who are lost, cut right to the heart with that man. Amen. When you make the choice to give in to that temptation. We're actually showing hate for the Lord. Isn't that something? Isn't that something, huh? <clears throat> let's, let's continue. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. I will also save you from all your uncleanness, and I will call for the corn, and will increase it, and lay no famine upon you. And I will multiply the fruit of the tree, and the increase of the field, that ye shall receive no more reproach of famine among the heathen. Then shall ye remember your own ways, and your doings that were not good, and shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for all for your iniquities and for your abominations. Hold your place here. Hold your place here. This I did not write this down, but this is just so beautiful. This is just so beautiful. Now remember, we are not to dwell, to live in our past. This is a, this is the tactics of this is the tactic of the devils, those who work for the Vatican, the coadjutors. They want to know you may be going forward. They want to drag you back here and keep you in your past sins. They want to keep in your memory your failures and stuff like that, okay? While it is healthy for you to remember these things, yes it is. You must never forget from whence ye came. I think that's a lot of, I think that's a problem for a lot of people. That they've been doing this, you know, they've been walking with the Lord for years and years and years and years and years and years and they forget from whence they came. They forget that they were once the walking dead out there. That they were once slighted, going straight to hell. We 
can't forget where we came from. We can't live, dwell upon it. See, that's what the devils do. See, the coadjutors who put on the facade that they are of the church of the living God, they want to keep you back here because they're not saved themselves. See, they put on the facade, they put on the adornment of a faith, which they call Christianity. All the while, they're not saved themselves. And they want to bring you, who are saved, back here. And we can't be like that. We must never forget. But we cannot dwell. Okay. And on that, Job says this. Job, chapter 42. Verses 1 on to verse 6. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not, things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Tell tale to what the Jews are going to experience in the very latter times of the time of Jacob's trouble. You know, they heard of him and then, oh, they see him. Okay, They'll, they see him coming at his second coming with us who get redeemed. Okay, wherefore, verse 6, I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. See, that alone goes contrary with what Christianity says, like people like Joyce Myers is like, just love yourself and give yourself a bit more, more, more. Oh, make me want a wretch. It doesn't work that way in reality. The true faith once delivered unto the saints, it doesn't work like that. Because why? Because why? Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter one, okay? And this, this, anyone who is truly saved, born again, converted to the church of the living God, you know this. You know this. <laughs> Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 18. For in much wisdom is much grief. Wisdom. What is wisdom? The fear of the Lord. And he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. Knowledge. Fear of the Lord. And unto man, he said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Having the fear of the Lord will bring to knowledge. And having true knowledge, this says that it increaseth sorrow. Why? Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. This, this, was, not, not, this was not even in the original notes that, uh, that the Lord gave me this morning. But I uh, have to address this. Romans chapter 6. <clears throat> verses 19 on to verse 23. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity, unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness and holiness. Holiness being separate other than that. Okay? <clears throat> For when ye were servant, when ye were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. And as we have talked about before, the Bibles take away servant and put slave. Hence, giving credence onto Calvinism, that there is no choice. Free will is a, an illusion. According to, that, That's what Calvin teaches. That's what Calvin teaches. That free will doesn't exist. The Cal free will does exist once you, uh, whenever that calling is uh, you're in, right? That's what their argument is. As the elect, you have free will. As the non-elect, you have free will. That's what they will argue. But see, when it comes to salvation, free will to the Calvinists is a fantasy. It doesn't exist. So the Calvinists will take, when they look at this, they say, slave. We're not slaves. You make the choice. You make the choice. What are you choosing? For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit 
had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? <laughs> Ezekiel 31. Uh, Ezekiel 36, excuse me, verse 31. Then shall ye remember your own evil ways and your doings that were not good and shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and your abominations. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, but now, being made free from sin and become servants, not slaves, servants to God. You, those of you out there who want to say that this ought to be slaves, then how come you still sin? If you're a slave to God, having no free will, a slave is under orders, a servant, a servant serves. The servant has the choice. Okay? A slave is held at gunpoint. A servant makes choices. So, if we are slaves, according to the Calvinists, according to the, the Bibles, if we are slaves to God, then why do we still sin? Think about that for a little bit. Okay? Let's continue. But now, being made free from sin and become servants to God, Ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But now, being a servant. Go back to Ezekiel 36 verse 32 now. Not for your sakes do I this, saith the Lord God. Be it known unto you. Be ashamed and confounded for your own ways, O house of Israel. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name. Give glory for thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. Okay? Yes. See, God didn't save you because you were a purchase to behold. You're nothing. I'm nothing. Why did God save us? Because he wanted to. To glorify himself. To take the most wretched, lost sinner and make them a saint. People say, well, I ain't no saint. If you're saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you are a saint. You are a saint. See, and that result, you because when you think of saint, you think of what? And this, this happens to no fault of our own most of the time. Because Satan, through his church, Mystery Babylon, Roman Catholicism, when you think of saint, what do you think of? You think of like the saints that are canonized, right? These holy, sinless kind of beings that, Catholic, that the Catholic Church put these people off to be, right? If you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, yes, you are a saint. But see, not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory, for thy mercy and for thy true sake. And, and a New Testament tie-in to this, a familiar verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 on to verse 17. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man, including yourself, defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, separate. Which temple ye are? And of course, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 on to verse 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Price. Therefore, glorify God in your body, in your spirit, which are God's. Well, Brad, doesn't that denote uh, slavery? How? Let me give you an example. How many of you parents, fathers and mothers, have children who 
do belong to you. They, they are your begotten children, right? But yet they don't do what you tell them to do. They still belong to you. you. They are begotten of you, right? Yeah? Okay? They belong to you, but they won't listen to you, right? This doesn't denote slavery. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? You're not your own. You're not by yourself. If you are saved, born again, converted of the church and the living God, God, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, dwells in you. This, isn't, this has nothing to do with slavery. <laughs> nothing. Okay? You're not your own. You're not alone. You're not alone. I know I'm not alone, but, but, but what? Doth not Christ satisfy? With every temptation, remember, look for an escape. Doth not our Lord Jesus Christ satisfy? What in you tells you that Christ is not the satisfaction of every one of your needs what gets in what flesh and that's what the devil goes after excuse me flesh that's what he goes after for ye are bought with a price therefore glorify God in your body and and in your spirit which are God so glorify God in your body and your spirit. Don't take your feet places where you ought to go, not, not to be going. Don't let your hands touch other things that you ought not to touch. Don't let your eyes be windows, doorways for devils to get in, to poison your mind, same with your ears. Psalm 115 now, verse 2. Wherefore should the heathen say, Where is now their God? <laughs> wherefore should the heathen say, Wherefore, uh, wherefore should the heathen say, Where is now their God? Oh, how many times have you run into this? You've lost everything. You've been taken out of the that beautiful comment, brother. Love you. Taken out of the secular workforce. Forced to depend on Christ alone, right? Forced to. Yeah. Yeah, because every every uh, opportunity that you look for, the door shuts. But from whence cometh your help, right? See, God will take things away from you to where your only option will to be to trust upon the Lord and his provision. We have been put into that place. Oh, oh, it's, it, it can be scary sometimes, let me tell you. But he's never let us down. No, never once. Never once. Though we, my wife and I, we let down the Lord every single day. And so do you. But see, our God's grace is unfathomable. His mercy endureth forever. God will put you into a situation where you have no other option but to trust in him. And then you get the people, Christians, atheists, that your God's going to allow you to go through that? What kind of God are you serving that when you stand up for him, he lets you do this? Yeah. Uh, Job. <laughs> Job chapter 2. And, and a perfect illustration here in Job. Very, very perfect illustration. Job, as we as we talked about in the previous video, Job in one fell swoop in four incidences, one, two, three, four, had everything taken away from him, his livelihood, his family, everything taken away from him. But what does he do? 
He, he uh, in chapter one, he shaves his head, he falls down, and says, "Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither." Blessed be uh, the Lord gave, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But then Satan is given permission to affect, uh, to afflict Job physically. Job chapter 2, verses 7 on to verse 10. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took him a potsherd to scrape himself with all. And he sat down among the ashes. Your God allows all this stuff to, to go to happen to you? Your God who you say loves you because you're saved? And he allows this to do to you? To go to, uh, to this stuff to happen to you? <laughs> then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. <laughs> yeah. But, well, but look at what Job says. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips. Whatever the Lord wants to do, and and not get ahead of ourselves, whatever the Lord wants to do, he will do. His ways are not our ways. We do, You don't know why you're going through some of the stuff you are going through. Maybe you do know. Maybe it's recompense for sin. Okay, maybe it is. But maybe you don't know. That's where faith comes in. That's where trust, hope comes in. That's where faith, trust, and hope comes in. Though he slay me, yet I will trust in him. Okay? And of course, Isaiah chapter 36. Isaiah, now this is a Isaiah chapter 36. Check this out. Another incident when uh, people looking, uh, coming and questioning, questioning the might, the truth of our God. Isaiah chapter 36. We want verses 13 on to verse 20. Then Rabshakeh stood and cried with a loud voice in the Jews' language and said, Hear ye the words of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus saith the king, Let not Hezekiah deceive you, for he shall not be able to, de to deliver you. This is when um, the king of Assyria sent uh, Rabshakeh to intimidate, to use uh, mind control kind of tactics and that kind of stuff uh, to scare the people of Israel, to get them to stop trusting in the Lord their God, okay? A lot of what you see happening today, okay? Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord. Oh, oh, saying the Lord will surely deliver us. This city shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Yea, hath God said. Yea, hath God said that he will never leave thee nor forsake thee. You, you sure do look pretty uh, left alone and forsaken now, don't you, right? You ever run into that one before, huh? <laughs> yeah. Hearken not to Hezekiah. For thus saith the king of Assyria... Make an agreement with me by a present, and come out to me, and eat ye every one of his vine, and every one of his fig tree, and drink ye every one the waters of his own cistern. And you know the, you gotta know the uh, reference for this. You gotta know, brother, sister, you got to know. If you don't, okay, <laughs> look at that verse. Uh, where, where, where were we? Where were we? Yeah. <laughs> Look at that verse. Verse 16 again. Hearken not to Hezekiah. For thus saith the king of Assyria. Assyria. Successful or victorious enemy, by the way. That's what that means. Make an agreement with me by a present. And come out to me. 
and eat every one of his vine and every one of his fig tree, and drink ye every one of the waters of his own cistern? Luke chapter 4. <laughs> Verses 5 on to verse 7. Of course we had to come here. You knew it. I hope you did. And the devil taking him up into an high mountain shewed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, also be thine. Make an agreement with me by a present and come out to me. Yeah, yea, I've got said. Let's continue in Isaiah chapter 36. Until, verse 17, until I come and take you away to a land like your own land, a counterfeit land. A land of corn and wine. A land of bread and vineyards. Bow down and worship the devil. And he'll give you all this stuff. He'll give you a counterfeit religion. A counterfeit faith. Called Christianity. With all these. you have, It's a smorgasbord. Whatever you feel like. Because it's all about you. Uh, not unto us, O oh Lord. Not unto us, but unto thy name give glory. But see this guy. It's all about you. Come out to me. Come on to me. Come to me. And I'll give you. I'll give you. Until I come and take you away to a land like your own land. Huh? Yeah. A land and corn and, uh, corn and wine. A land of bread and vineyards. Beware, lest Hezekiah persuade you, saying, The Lord will deliver us. Hath any of the gods, little g, of the nations delivered his land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the little g gods of Hamath and Arphad? Where are the little g gods of Sepharvim? And have they delivered Samaria out of my hand? Comparing devils unto the Lord. See, that's what devils do. That's what the devils do. Who are they among all the gods of these lands that have delivered their land out of my hand that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand? Oh, wow, right? Wow. Yeah. Who is God save the Lord? Exactly, right? But look at what the temptation is. Yeah. Wherefore should the heathen say, Where is now their God? And what does he offer you? Your God. Your God's letting you go through this? No. Your God's cruel. Come. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Who loves you. Who's not mad at you. All you got to do is believe. I have repentance. That's not just a work. Don't worry about it. Just come. Just come to me. I'll give you all these things. It'll look like something that seems similar to what these, these heretic people uh, known as the Church of God tell you, but don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Make a present with me. Give me a present and come to me. And I'll show be thine. <laughs> Satan, at your worst, wants you to uh, wants you to um, compromise. Wants you to compromise. He wants you to bend a little bit. He doesn't want you to be extreme. God, you know the extremity of God. How extreme God is. Okay. All you got to do is read Isaiah chapter 53 sometime and then blow it out your rear end. With, oh, you're going to extremes that God never wanted us to go to. You try telling him that at the great white throne of judgment. You, you try having that mentality when you read Isaiah chapter 53. 
Talk about the extremes, huh? And all God expects of you is to do what he says and to not bend, to not compromise. And what does Satan want you to do? He wants you to compromise. I don't care what you're going through. Don't compromise. I'm not going to. Don't you either. Because compromising our Lord Jesus Christ in order to get by, to, in order to get a, a box of frosted flakes, it might serve you good right now, but in the end, your mouth is going to be filled with gravel, dear friend. Verse 3 in Psalm 115. But our God is in the heavens. He hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. Oh, and speaking about what he hath pleased. Okay, we were just I was just talking about this. Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53 verses 10 under verse 12. Isaiah chapter 53 verses 10 under verse 12. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. God so loved, past tense, that he gave, past tense, only once, his only begotten son. Those are past tense. Gave. Loved, past tense. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. You talk about extremes. He hath put he hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. The pleasure of the Lord. Bringing people to God through Christ Jesus our Lord who died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And as we're seeing, that pleased the Lord? Because it was necessary, the only thing that could be done to bring his creation back onto him because of the heavy, extreme price that sin cost for God to eradicate it. And then you talk about, well, you're going to explain. Shut up. Hush. I don't think we're being an extreme enough in some of our areas. Now, granted, you, you can take extremity being extreme to very silly measures. Yes, you can. Like, uh, what is it, the eighth degree of separation? I won't talk to so-and-so because his first cousin on his mother's side, twice removed, talked to an, a Muslim, therefore, eighth degree of separation. I'm not going to... No, that, that's stupid. That's stupid. And that is an extreme that is just silly, not backed up by Scripture, too, by the way. And you got to remember, this is our standard. The authorized version of the scriptures is our standard. You follow this, your life will go good for you. Talking to those who are saved. If you're lost trying to do this apart from God, this is just a book. See, you're lost, you can read parts of the scripture and the Lord will guide you on to himself through scripture. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. But if he doesn't save you, and you're a, you're a coadjutor or put on the facade, you're a Christian, it, you're not going to get anything deep. You're not going to get any meat out of this. Why? Because comparing spiritual things with spiritual. And if your spirit is the spirit of this world, you know? He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many for he shall bear their iniquities therefore will I divide him a portion with the great and he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he hath poured out his soul unto death and he was numbered with the transgressors and he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors again who is on the cross 
God was. In him, our Lord Jesus Christ, is the fullness of the Godhead bodily, spirit, soul, and body. Okay, the Word made flesh, the Father, the Soul, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit. God Himself, the Godhead, the fullness of the Godhead bodily, was on the cross. Okay, God Himself was on the cross. And what is it, and again, what does the Trinitarian say? That the God part two, the God the Son, not God totally. God was on the cross. Talk about extreme. And and it pleased him. But our God is in the heavens. He hath done whatsoever he pleased. And, and we think that we can stand in the way of God? Some will say, well, the Bible said that they thwarted my plans. You're talking about that thing in Numbers, right? You shall, what the scriptures say, ye shall know my... Well, let's go there. One second. In Numbers chapter 14, verse 34, it reads, Now, this happens when... Okay, backstory. In Numbers chapter 14 and in Numbers 13 and 14, okay? The Lord said send, uh, to Moses, send guys out to the promised land to check it out and let them bring back the report, okay? God said, there's the promised land. Go get it. Go get it. I'll be with you, but go get it. Trust in the Lord. But see, you got to put legs in them prayers, right, brother? God put legs in them prayers. Okay? Our Lord said to the children of Israel, go, 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 see, there's the problem. See that? See? See it over there? Go get it. Go get I'm going to be with you. You're going to get it. You will get this land, promised land or else I'm lying to you. And he doesn't lie. Okay? But God said, go, go, go get it. Trust me. And let's do this. But see, to prove Israel as a, as a means to see who was who. The Lord said for Moses to send people out. And when they came back, they brought back uh, grapes on a branch and stuff like that. But what happened? They brought up an evil report of the land because they said that the guys that lived there were giants and we were grasshoppers in their sight. We were nothing. And uh, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and I think it was Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, uh, yeah, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. Those were the only two out of the 12 uh, people, or uh, excuse me, yeah, out of the guys that went over there to uh, check out the land. Those were the only two that's like, hey, the Lord said we are going to get this. Let's, let's, let's do it. Let's go. He said we are going to get it. Let's trust him and go get it. But the rest of the people said, no, no, no. We can't do it. God isn't strong enough. And then they talked about going back to Egypt. Let's go back to Egypt. God, our God is not strong enough. Uh, who is your God, right? Right, but yeah, wherefore should the heathen say, where is now their God? But our God is in the heavens. He hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. But the verse in question, verse 34 in um, Numbers chapter 14. And he said, 40, day, uh, 40 years, uh, a year for a day that uh, you uh, searched the land. Verse 34. After the number of the days in which he searched the land, even 40 days, each day for a year, shall ye bear your iniquities, even 40 years, and ye shall know my breach of promise it's not that man has the power to alter what God says God forbid who do you think you are but breach of promise God made a promise to those people specifically and because they didn't trust him then he's going to be like okay I promised you this but you don't want to trust me to do what I said I was going to do after I did all this for you I'm going to go against what I said my breach of promise. He didn't lie. 
He brought the children of Israel into the promised land, but they didn't trust him. God did God can't lie. It's not a lie. God did not lie there. It was a breach of promise. Okay? A breach of promise. They didn't want to believe him. They didn't want to trust him. So his promise was put off for that generation that would be of those children that he would wander in the wilderness for 40 years. He, he did not lie. But see, those people specifically. Breach of promise. Okay? Man cannot do anything to alter what God has said. Once God has said it, it's in stone, boy. It is in stone. Absolutely it is. And it says right here, But our God is in the heavens. He hath done whatsoever, whatsoever he hath pleased. And now go to Psalm 135. Psalm 135. God didn't want to uh, have that breach of promise. But they didn't believe him. They wouldn't trust in him. You think about that for us today. Now, if we deny him, he will deny us. Not salvifically, but blessings, provision, and uh, um, uh, mercies and stuff like that. If we uh, believe not, yet he is faithful. He cannot deny himself. Okay? But you got to remember... We deny the Lord and go against him. Like uh, our dear brother said, you're actually showing hate for the God who saved you when you give yourself over to temptation, when you don't trust in him. Remember that. Next time you're thinking about giving yourself over to that temptation. Psalm 136, 135, verses 6 on to verse 12. Whatsoever the Lord pleased, that did he in heaven and in earth, in the seas and all deep places. He causeth the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings for the rain. He bringeth the wind out of his treasuries, who smote the firstborn in Egypt, both of man and beast, who sent tokens and wonders into the midst of thee, O Egypt, upon Pharaoh and upon all his servants. And remember, Egypt, for us today, instruction and in righteousness is a type of this world. Pharaoh is a type of Satan, okay? <laughs> and his servants, those who serve Satan, okay? Who smote great nations and slew mighty kings. Shion, king of the Amorites, and Og, the king of Bashan, and all the kingdoms of Canaan. And he gave their land for an heritage. And heritage unto Israel, his people. Whatever he pleased. Who are we? We can't stop the Lord. You can't stop the Lord. And Psalm 51, about what pleases the Lord. Psalm 51, don't worry, we're going to get to that thing in Hebrews. Psalm 51, verses 16, on to the close of the chapter. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. A broken spirit. When you get humbled of your self-righteousness and realize that you're, not, you're nothing, you're not good, oh, that can break you. It ought to break you. And contrite, contrition, godly sorrow. It's your fault. And what does the scripture say here? O God, thou wilt not despise. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Who's going to build the walls of Jerusalem? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness with burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. He who began a good work in you will finish it unto the end, making you are made a new creature in Christ Jesus, and your life is a life of continual sanctification, abstaining from all appearance of evil. 
But Satan comes along. At your worst. Hey. Everybody's got to do it. Everybody needs something. Bend a little. Don't be so high and mighty. Don't be so extreme. Don't be one of those scripture thumpers. <laughs> Give in a little. Go ahead. And I'll give you this. And of course, what many of you are probably thinking of, which we already touched on in Hebrews chapter 6, uh, Hebrews 11, Hebrews 11, one verse, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, <laughs> he is, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, yes, okay, he is, okay, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. <laughs> Wait, where's your faith? Is your faith on Jesus Christ? Or is your faith in your faith? These easy believism idiots, their faith is in their faith. Their faith is not upon Jesus Christ, God our Father. No, their faith is in themselves because they saved themselves by their own belief. And as we already looked in Numbers, okay? Trust the Lord. Have faith on him. He said it was finished. So it's finished. Do what he says. And he won't deny you. No good thing will he withhold from them who walk uprightly. And you think that doesn't, uh, that you think that doesn't, it doesn't hold weight for us today in this dispensation? Salvifically. Like I said, and as you ought to know by now. You come to the Lord on his terms. And he save you. You're once saved, always saved. You can't lose what's not yours. But oh, come on, come on. How, how many of you already know this? When you don't do it his way, man, and you, you want to give in to that temptation, you think God's not seeing you, a little ain't going to hurt. Oh boy, how does that work for you? Psalm 115 now, let's continue on from verses 4 on to verse 8. And we're going to expound on verse 8. Now from verses 4 on to verse 7 is also spoken of in Psalm 135. But their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. Those who speak words to no profit, like that you got to keep the commandments today to be saved. Their idols are silver and gold. Make money their idol, their object in life. Okay? They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Noses have they, but they smell not. They have hands, but they handle not. Feet have they, but they walk not. Neither speak they through their throat. Now, yes, this is talking about an idol statue. Yes, it is. But yes, it is. But is that is that as deep as it goes? Come on now. The idols, their idols are silver and gold. The work of men's hands. The work of men's hands. What man does, okay? They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they see not. Hmm. How many of these Christians profess that, uh, well, I know the Lord. Oh yeah, they sure do. They have mouths, but they speak not. They speak not the truth of Jesus Christ. They speak feeling, emotion. They have eyes, have they, but they see not. They, they don't even have eyes to see that they are counterfeit. That they're, they're lost. That they're worshiping another Jesus. They have ears, but they hear not. Oh, come on, brother, sister. Come on. We know this one, don't we? How many times have you... Okay, hey, hey, 
can I hear it? Let me read to you some of the scripture. I don't want to hear it. But, 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 but I don't want to hear it. God loves me. I'm saved because I just believed. <laughs> they have uh, mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they, they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Noses have they, but they smell not. They can't smell the stench of the burning that awaits them. Yeah. They have hands, but they handle not. Feet have they, but they walk not. Hands, let uh, let them be, let, uh, what is that in the scriptures? Uh, bind them about thy neck, uh, write them upon the table of thine heart, having the scriptures in your hands. And uh, the feet they have, but they walk not, walk not after the Lord. But what do they walk after? They walk after their own sin, right? Neither speak they through their throat. They that make them are like unto them. So is everyone that trusteth unto them. An idol. Now, these, this, these idols that is being described here, are, may, are what are those all like? Mouth, speaking, eyes, ears, smelling. Uh, those, are, those are things of man. Those are the things of a man. Yes, it's talking about a statue. Yes, context right there in Psalm 115. Yes, it's talking about a statue. But that's not as deep as it goes, dear friend. Okay? That's not as deep as it goes. It's deeper than that. That's a counterfeit if I've ever seen one being described to us. You get it? And that is what Satan wants. He's offering you a counterfeit. He's, he wants you to be like the children of Israel. So that the Lord will deny you his blessings and mercy. You'll go to heaven when you die. But you not having faith on the Lord and compromising is going to make him look bad. And if Satan can tempt you, church of the living God, to make the Lord look bad by you not having complete trust and faith in whatever it is he's doing to you. If Satan can make you just make the Lord look bad, then he has a victory. Verse 8 again. They that make them are like unto them. So is everyone that trusteth in them. And of course, as many of you might have uh, been thinking about, what, where is that one in Deuteronomy? Yeah. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 7. Verses 25 on to verse 26. The graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein. For it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. The glamour, the glitz, the wealth, the prestige. They that make them are like unto them. What is that? Verse 4. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. Verse 8. They that make them are like unto them. So is everyone that trusteth in them. So is everyone that trusteth in them. The graven images of their gods ye shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein. For it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be a cursed thing like unto it. Lest thou be a cursed thing like it. Excuse me. But thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. Television. You bring that accursed thing into your house and you watch what the world gives you, you go to the world for amusements. A news, not to think. You go to the world for amusement. You go to the world for comfort, to pass the time. What happens? What happens when you feed yourselves on a television, fills your mind with things of this world? And it trains your mind with all the mind control and the visual stimuli with the sound working to control your mind, to reprogram your mind. You start thinking in worldly terms. 
you start thinking about fleshly things. Hence, you get your focus away from the Lord. You become a cursed thing like it. Yes? Okay? Yeah. Yeah, they're talking, it's talking about a statue. But there again, instruction and in righteousness, people, it is not limited to just that. Comprende? Okay? And also Isaiah chapter 44. Here, here check this out. Isaiah chapter 44. Isaiah chapter 44. Verses 9 on to verse 20. They that make a graven image are all of them vanity, nothing, useless, worthless, hopeless. And their delectable things shall not profit. What does it profit you to be lusting after the world and worldly things? What does it profit you to sit on your rear end and spend eight hours watching television? What does it profit you? And they are their own witnesses. They see not, nor know, that they may be ashamed. Who hath formed a god or molten a graven image that is profitable for nothing? Behold, all his fellows shall be ashamed, and the workmen that are of men. Let them all be gathered together. Let them stand up. Yet they shall fear, and they shall be ashamed together. The smith with tongs both worketh in the coals, and fashioneth it with hammers, and worketh it with the strength of his arms. Yea, he is hungry, and his strength faileth. He drinketh no water, and is faint. The carpenter stretcheth out his rule. He marketh it out with a line. He fitteth it with planes, and he maketh it out of the compass, and he marketh it out with the compass. Beg your pardon. See, that's why you need to follow along, okay? And maketh it after the figure of a man, according to the beauty of a man, that it may remain in the house. Isn't it interesting that a majority of the idols that are worshipped are in either a form of a man or of birds or of creeping things. Oh, Romans chapter 1, anybody, right? Hmm? Isn't that interesting? Let's continue. He heareth that, uh, yeah, according to the beauty of a man that he may remain in the house, he heweth him down cedars, and taketh the cypress and the oak, which he strengthened for himself among the trees of the forest. He planteth an ash, and the rain doth nourish it. The rain doth nourish the wood that men use to bring forth false gods. Using God's provision to make an idol out of a man. Using God's provision to make Then shall it be for a man to burn. For he will take thereof and warm himself. Yea, he kindleth it and baketh bread. Yea, he maketh a god and worshipeth it. He maketh it a graven image and falleth down thereto. He burneth part thereof in the fire. With part thereof he eateth flesh. He roasteth roast and is satisfied. Hmm. Yea, he warmeth himself and saith, Ah, I am warm. I have seen the fire. I thought we walk, and today we walk by faith, not by not by sight. And the residue thereof he maketh a god, even his graven image. He falleth down unto it, and worshipeth it, and prayeth unto it, and saith, Deliver me, for thou art my God. <laughs> the things that God has given us for use to for us and to glorify his name of those things we make idols man makes idols out of what do you think you're doing when you're too concerned with the things of the world and not concerned with whatever the Lord wants to do they have not known nor understood 
For he has shut their eyes that they cannot see, and their hearts that they cannot understand. <laughs> and none considereth in his heart, neither is there knowledge nor understanding to say, I have burned part of it in the fire. Yea, also I have baked bread upon the coals thereof. I have roasted flesh and eaten it. And shall I make the residue thereof an abomination? Shall I fall down to the stock of a tree? He feedeth on ashes. A deceived heart hath turned him aside, that he cannot deliver his soul, nor say, Is there not a lie in my right hand? <laughs> yeah, because God gives them over. Like it says in Romans chapter 1. They worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. <laughs> they that make them are like unto them. So is everyone that trusteth in them. Okay. And then of course, Acts chapter 17. New Testament tie-in. Okay. Acts chapter 17. Like I said, we're just going over the things that the Lord personally uh, showed me while going through this psalm. And I'm sharing it with you, okay? that's This is how this works. Acts chapter 17, verses 29 and verse 31. For as much then as we ought, for as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, Graven by art and man's device. Man's device. Man. Man. Hold your place there. Uh, we made reference to it. Now let's see it. In Romans chapter 1. Okay. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, made imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and to four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Go back to Acts chapter 17. Picking up at verse 30. And the times of this ignorance God winked at. But now commandeth, commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Calvin. Because he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained. Whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, and that he hath raised him from the dead. And also, First uh, Corinthians chapter eight. First Corinthians chapter eight. First Corinthians chapter eight. Now, as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up. But charity edifieth. And if a man think that he know anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. What God do you love? The God of the scriptures or the God that you've made up in your own mind? As concerning, therefore, the, the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world. And that there is none other God but one. For though there be for though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as there be gods many and lords many. Okay? Gods, those who are able to judge good and evil. Okay. What was Satan's temptation? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So when he says that there be gods many and lords many, judges, people who are judging what is good and what is evil. Okay, and also literally many pagan deities. 
Okay, let's continue. But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. Howbeit there is not in every man that knowledge. For some with conscience of the idol, unto this hour eat it as eat it as a thing offered unto an idol, and their conscience being weak is defiled. Howbeit there is not in every man that knowledge. Hmm. Why is that? Why is that? Because most people have been given over and serve and worship the creature more than the creator. But meat commendeth us not to God. For neither if we eat are we the better, neither if we eat not are we the worse. But meat commendeth us not to God. Oh, it's a sin for you to eat pork today. No, it's not. They're lying to you. They just don't like bacon, eh? Again, those people who are speaking to you words of to, to no profit, trying to bring you under the law. Okay? But take heed, lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. For if any man see thee which hast knowledge sit at meat in the idol's temple... Shall not the conscience of him which is weak be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to idols? Oh, we can really make an, a good argument in verses 9 and 10 about a certain day and a certain month, couldn't we? We sure could. And through thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died. But when ye sin so against the brethren... And wound their weak conscience, ye sin against Christ. Wherefore, if, my, if meat make my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world standeth, lest I make my brother to offend. The idol has nothing. The idol is nothing. <laughs> they that make them are like unto them. So is everyone that trusteth in them. Verse 9. O Israel! It's a turning point. Every psalm, virtually every psalm, has a turning point, like I've told you before. O Israel! Trust thou in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. O house of Aaron! Trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Ye that fear the Lord... Trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Psalm 73. Psalm 73. Verses 25 and 26. Psalm 73. Verses 25 and 26. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. O Israel, trust thou in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Psalm 55. Psalm 55. I always tell people, comfort in affliction, you go to the scriptures. I personally go to the Psalms quite often. Life is in the Psalms. Okay? Psalm 55, verse 16 on to verse 18. As for me, as for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. Now, we, a lot of us, I know many of the brethren uh, will be in prayer throughout the day. You know, little, you know, little prayers like, you know, you're driving or walking. It's like, oh, Lord, thank you. Or, oh, Lord, brother or sister, so-and-so is on my mind. I hope, you know, stuff like that. But 
But this is talking about evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. Three times a day. Three times a day. In the morning when you wake up, at noon, you know, set yourself apart. Set some time aside. Go and pray. Do I pray like that three times a day? No. No, I don't. I, I want to. I do sometimes. Not all the time. Like so many of you. I say many prayers throughout the day. Bullet prayers, I guess you can call them. They have been called. You know, like what Nehemiah is like, Oh, Lord, give me strength before this guy. <laughs> you know, something like that. We do a lot of that. But what this is talking about, you know, in the, in the morning, you wake up, literally, flap out of bed. You face on the carpet or on the hardwoods. Like, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for the rest. That kind of thing. And at noon, Lord, they, and it, the day is almost half gone. <laughs> thank you for getting me this far. And at evening, thank you, Lord, for the day that you have given me. Hi, me too. We ought to start doing this like that. Don't you think? I, like you, say a lot of prayers throughout the day. A lot. In the morning, we take our time and spend half hour, hour, whatever it is, in prayer in the morning uh, to our Lord and at evening uh, as well. But the midday thing, not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory for thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. Not unto us. Lord, you got me through thus far. May you continue to get me through the rest of the day. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. He hath delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me, for there were many with me. Many with me. The prayers of the saints. Our, our best, my best friend, our, our dear brother Alexander Hartley is going through quite a few things. And um, uh, trusted brethren, I share, you know, prayer requests for our brother Alexander. Please keep brother Alexander Hartley in your prayers. He, he's, he's, he's going through some stuff and he really needs your prayers. Please keep him in your prayers. Okay. But yes, for there were many with me. Many with me. Pray for one another, brethren. Pray with one another. Pray for one another. There is strength in numbers, especially when it comes to prayer. Especially when it comes to prayer. Okay? And Psalm 57. Psalm 57. Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. I will cry unto God most high, unto God that performeth all things for me. All things. Shall we not receive... Uh, evil from the Lord as well as good. We already looked at that in Job. Well, why would the Lord send evil upon us? Why would he allow Satan to do this to us? To strengthen our faith in him? Uh, because you done chose sin over the ways of the Lord? His ways are not our ways. Okay? There are reasons, yes, and you can muse upon them, Sometimes we don't know. Unfortunately, though, and if you were honest with yourself, a lot of the times, a lot of the times, not all the times, a lot of the times you know why you're, certain things are happening to you, don't you? Whether it's you took a stand for God, I'm not taking the steel of the Jesuit poniard, Okay? Not happening. I don't care what it costs me. I ain't doing it. Praise the Lord. Oh, it gets scary, doesn't it? But praise the Lord. He will reward you and honor you for that. Or I'm not going to compromise what the scripture says in order to make peace with someone who isn't even saved in the first place. Or 
like we talked about in the previous video. Or, this is happening because I did what I did the other day. Because I didn't trust on you and I chose to give myself over onto my sin. And you know, when you're in that position, be a man, be a man, be a woman, and come clean. Don't do like Adam. Oh, the woman thou gavest me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. No, fess up. Lord, it's my fault. It's my fault. I, I, I can blame no one else. I know brethren, sisters, who sin. They don't justify their sin. And they at least, at least, I'm going to pay for this. I'm not making any justification for it. I'm sinning when I have done this. And I'm going to pay for it. I respect, I think they ought to quit doing what they're doing. But I, I respect that at least. At least. Because they're not trying to hide like a Christian would. Okay? Verse 3 in Psalm 57. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that would swallow me up. Shalah. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. And who wants to swallow you up? Oh, the coadjutor uh, who works for the Vatican, who wants to keep you back here in sin, who wants to remind you of, of certain failures, who wants to just keep you back here because they're back here. They're not safe to begin with themselves. Yeah. My soul is among lions. And the devil himself, as a roaring lion, walketh and seeketh uh, seeketh um, whom he may devour. I just bradized that a little bit, beg your pardon. Okay? My soul is among lions, and I lie even among them that are set on fire, set on fire by their tongues, set on fire by the fires of hell. Yeah. Even the sons of men, whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. And uh, there's, uh, there's the reference for Psalm 30 right there. Yeah. <laughs> Be thou, here's the turning point, be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. Amen. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory for thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you start thinking that you're a catch to behold, that, well, there is something in me worth God saving me for no you you're totally missing it and you've made yourself an idol you've made yourself an idol be thou exalted O God above the heavens let thy glory be above all the earth they have prepared a net for my steps my soul is bowed down they have digged a pit for me into the midst where, whereof they are fallen themselves, Shila. <laughs> you look at these coadjutors, these devils. Yeah, they 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 uh they want to get a net for your feet to catch you, right? They they dig for you, uh, they dig a pit for you. But every single time they fall into it themselves, every single time. Go figure, huh? My heart is fixed. Oh God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. Now, fixed here does not mean repaired. It means focused on, fixed. Okay? I, I, I know, I know you want to, uh, you know, put into this context, my heart is repaired, oh God. My heart is repaired. I will sing and give praise. No, that's that's not no fixed, centered, focused on. That's what this means. Talking about okay. Awake up, my glory. Awake, psaltery and harp. I myself will awake early. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations. 
most of all who are lost. Okay? As ambassadors of for Christ. Okay? For thy mercy is great unto the heavens, and thy truth unto the clouds. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory, for thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. Amen. It's not about you. It's not about me. We are ambassadors for Christ. It's not about us. It's not about us. And what we go through, consequences for what we have done, yes. But other times, it's not about us at all. But that rather we can have faith on him and be an example to those about us. To be, again, like in the previous video, a testimony against them. Okay? Okay? Verse 12 in Psalm 115. The Lord hath been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. The Lord hath been mindful. Isn't that something? Psalm 144. There, there are other ones that uh, we can go to, but this is, like I said, I'm sharing with you what the Lord shared with me. Psalm 144, verses 1 under verse 4. Now check this out, okay? Verse 12. The Lord hath been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. Psalm 144, verses 1 under verse 4. Blessed be the Lord my strength, which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. My goodness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield, and he in whom I trust, who subdueth my people under me. Lord, what is man that thou takest knowledge of him? Or the son of man that thou makest account of him? Man is like to vanity. His days are as a shadow that passeth away. Now, really quickly, verse 13 in Psalm 115. He will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. Psalm 147, Psalm 147, verses 1 unto verse 11. Praise ye the Lord. For it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant, and praise is comely. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathereth together the outcasts of Israel. He healeth the broken in heart. He bindeth up their wounds. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. Uh, a, a, a proof text or a reference that might prove that stars are also references unto angels. Okay. Great is our Lord and of great power. His understanding is infinite. The Lord lifteth up the meek. He casteth the wicked down to the ground. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praise upon the harp unto our God, who covereth the heaven with clouds, who prepareth rain for the earth, who maketh grass to grow upon the mountains. He giveth to the beast his food and to the young ravens which cry. Have you noticed so far the encompassing of all things within what we are looking at so far? Man, beast, earth, that kind of stuff. Okay? He giveth to the beast his food, and to the young ravens which cry. He delighteth not in the strength of the horse. He taketh not pleasure in the legs of a man. Because he doesn't see it as man see it. Because man, like it says in Samuel, man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh upon the heart. We, unfortunately, most of the time, even we as the church of the living God, we can't seem to sometimes get past, excuse me, this, the skin suit. We can't seem to get past that most of the times. <laughs> Sometimes it, they'll cost us. 
because uh, sometimes we might be a little too trusting uh, when we shouldn't be. And sometimes, too, that will make us a little bit harder in heart than we need to be. Okay? But I've learned uh, through experience, too, that sometimes, sometimes in that rare occasion, when you take a chance and don't just go upon what you see on the outside, but try to see what is on the inside. There are the rare opportunities and rare chances that you will find a diamond in the rough. Or a brother um, born for adversity. Verse 11. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him and those that hope in his mercy. Do you fear the Lord? See, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. <laughs> that's why, That's why you know, when people have accused me of being a racist, it's like, dude, shut up. Dude, shut your mouth, okay? <laughs> uh, I don't care of what kindred you are of. If you are saved, born again, converted, what say the scriptures? In Christ Jesus, there is neither uh, Jew or Greek, Bond or free, barbarian or Scythian, male or female, okay? In salvation, we are all one. In salvation, you're my brother. You're my sister. It doesn't matter if you're Ham or if Shem. It doesn't matter, okay? Uh, culturally, as far as marriage, those are different stories. But as far as salvation, it doesn't matter. In salvation, there is no distinction today in salvation there is no distinction there is distinction in other areas culturally yes salvifically none the Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him and those that hope in his mercy okay and Psalm 121 Psalm 121. Psalm 121. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. Right there. People will be come to this and say like, well, okay, you're saying this says that the Lord will preserve you. Then how do you explain uh, what's going on to in your life right now? Uh, how do you reconcile that? We'll get to that. Okay. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth, even forevermore. Now, let's read verse 14. The Lord shall increase you more and more. In Psalm 115. The Lord shall increase you more and more. You and your children. Proverbs 22. Proverbs 22. Oops. Proverbs 22. Don't worry. I've left that hanging question in the air for a reason. Okay? Don't worry about that. Not yet. Proverbs 22. We want verses 1 under verse 4. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor than silver and gold. There is only one name given among men under heaven by, where we must, by which we must be saved. That is Jesus Christ. And loving favor rather than silver and gold. Now, yes, having a good name, that your name be not dragged through the mud, yes, that, you know, that kind of thing, yes. But at the uh, name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, okay, the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, which we bear, which we bear as the church of God or the church of the living God. You're a Christian? What Christ do you represent? 
Okay? Get out of here with that. Let's continue. The rich and poor meet together. The Lord is maker of them all. Rich and poor. Rich in the world, poor, poor in the world. By this, yes. But what does our Lord say? Blessed are the poor in spirit. Poor because we see what's the, what's happening to the world and waiting, yearning for our Lord to say, Come up hither! And the rich and poor meet together. The Lord is maker of them all. <laughs> uh, verse 13, He will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. Rich and poor. Okay? I know this isn't for verse 13. Let's continue. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. I will take my refuge under thy wings until these calamities be overpassed. Okay? A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. Where is our refuge? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 4. By humility... And the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. <laughs> and of course, Psalm 19, or Proverbs 19, verses 20 on to verse 23. Hear counsel and receive instruction that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. Many devices. Oh, when things are going bad for you, how, the, the, the wheel mill starts turning, doesn't it? And you start thinking about this. Well, if I maybe if I do this, this might help. If, or if I go this way, if I... I don't have health insurance. And because of my heart problem, I had a really bad night a while ago. In a moment of stupidity and of sin... I try. I looked into. I you know got on the fancy schmancy cell phone, uh, <laughs> fancy schmancy cell phone, and I looked up getting health insurance. And then the Lord, you know, I, I, I made a mistake. I gave him my phone number. I gave him my email because you got to sign up for this stuff. And then the Lord immediately is like, Brad, what are you doing? You're right, Lord. You're right. You're right. You're right. And I'm reaping what I sow. Now I'm getting phone calls from all these and these weird emails with question marks and oh, so many. It's just pathetic. <laughs> but see, when things start going wrong with us, when things, when we start suffering affliction, when we start going through tribulation, we start devices, many things start, well, Okay, what if I do this? If I go here? If I go here? If I do this? Or what if I try this? Uh, nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord. That shall stand. This counsel or work be of men, it will come to naught. The desire of a man is his kindness, and a poor man is better than a liar. Amen. The fear of the Lord tendeth to life, and he that hath it shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. And right there, right there, satisfied. Does the Lord satisfy you? Well, yes, Brad, but there are certain areas where the Lord can't satisfy me. Really? 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 Why not? Why not? Right away, what are you thinking of? What are you thinking of? You're thinking of physicalities with uh, a spouse, aren't you? But see, if the Lord is in you, and the counsel of the Lord that stand, he can divert your attention from that. He can make a way to escape. See? I'm not alone. I have a wife. I was alone for many years. A lonely man. Yes. Yes, I was. 
I have a wife. There are those of you who don't have a wife or don't have a husband. I understand that. And it's almost become trivial to a point, hasn't it? When people tell you you're not alone, it's like, yes, I know I'm not alone. But, but, man's going to fail you. Woe be to you who trust in man. God will use man. Yes, mankind, man and woman, okay? God will use man, yes. But when your trust is in man first, we already read in Romans chapter 1, when you worship and serve the creature more than the creator, I do, rem I do know what it's like to be lonely. I do. Even though I have a wife and have been married for 10 years, I wasn't always married. I was alone for many, many, many years, okay? And loneliness is hard. But the Lord who is in you will make a way to escape that temptation. That temptation to dwell upon your loneliness. Easy for you to say, Brad. No, it's not. No, that's not easy to say. For the Lord saved me, I was a sodomite. And being a sodomite, a lost sinner, and a sodomite on top of that, you talk about lonely. You talk about lonely. <laughs> but see, the Lord in you, Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, in you, can make a way to escape. Because, unfortunately, sometimes when you get too lonely or dwell on loneliness, you end up worshiping man because you elevate having an actual fleshly body along with you. And that consumes most people in loneliness. I've been there. And that's when you got to be like, whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The fear of the Lord tendeth to life, and he that hath it shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil visited with evil. If the Lord can't satisfy you in every aspect of your life, then why are you serving him? I'll leave that alone as that, okay? Now let's read verse 15. Did we even, wait, did we even finish that? Yes, we did. Now let's read verse 15. Ye are blessed of the Lord which made heaven and earth. Verse 15. You are blessed of the Lord which made heaven and earth. And on that little spiel that I was talking about. Okay. And I understand. Yes. Not everybody can take that. I understand that. I understand that. Okay. Uh, if I didn't. You know. I burn. I burn. I would. If I didn't have my wife. I, it'd be horrible, but, but, I'm not alone. The Lord is with me. I know that some people don't have a helpmeet or a husband to do the physical things around the house. I know that. I know that. But that deep-rooted loneliness while you're sitting there in your chair or on your couch or on your bed and that thing in your gut and in your heart, just that loneliness... And then you fantasize, and then your mind drifts away. And what happens when that happens? That's what I'm talking about. And with that, okay, ye are blessed of the Lord which made heaven and earth. Ye are blessed of the Lord which made heaven and earth. You have the Lord within you. But Romans chapter 8, verses 31 on verse 39. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? 
He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? God's elect. God elected the way of the cross. Okay? The way of the cross, that's what he elected. If you go to him, the way of the cross, which is death, more on that in the video coming out, hopefully the next video of this week. More on that later. But you go to God on his terms within this dispensation, that makes you elect. Because you went to the way that he elected, okay? It's not that Calvinistic garbage. All right? Let's continue. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Tribulation and, or distress. Going through some tribulation right now. We are. And so many are of you. Does that mean that Christ doesn't love us? Those who are of the church of the living God? No. Or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril. Persecution for standing up for the truth of Scripture. While everyone else is compromising. Or famine. Don't cut any food. Or nakedness. Without a covering, ladies. Excuse me. Women without a covering. Nakedness. No one to be with you to be warm. Or peril. Or sword. Hmm. As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory, for thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And it's that simple. It's that simple. Ye are blessed of the Lord, which made heaven and earth. <laughs> you don't have a pot to pee in. Neither do we. But we are blessed of the Lord. And see, the world and Christians, your God, you, you, you can't even pay your bills. You've, you've been wearing the same clothes for, five, for a couple of days. Oh, when did I just get out of high school, you know? Your God's allowing you to go, putting you through this, and that's your God? Yes. You are blessed the Lord, which made heaven and earth. His ways are not our ways. I'm going to trust him no matter what I go through. Whether it's self-inflicted or because I'm doing as I'm supposed to do. I'm going to trust in him because he knows best. He knows best. Verse 16 in Psalm 115. The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth hath he given to the children of men. And you can read about that in Genesis, about how Adam was to have rule over the earth. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Okay, but Isaiah 45, Isaiah 45, just two verses here, because we're going to get, when it comes to verse 17, Isaiah 45, verses 18 and 19. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth 
and made it. He established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, seek ye me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Verse 17. The dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. The dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. The dead. Can a dead body praise the Lord? No. Of course not. Neither the, any that go down into silence, silent in the grave. This thing about dead. Now, obviously, obviously, okay? Have you ever seen a dead body before? I have, unfortunately, a few, okay? The, the light that's in their eyes is gone. I've seen dead people, okay? Can a dead body say, praise the Lord? No. 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 But I want to say, so, I want to put something into your mind also to think about. The dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. Neither any that go down into silence. Talking about the grave, right? The dead praise not the Lord. Have you ever heard of this thing called Hillsong? Unfortunately, I'm sure many of you have. And they have this popular <laughs> worship, worship thing that they do. And you see all these guys like, oh. the dead praise not the Lord. Those people are dead in their trespasses and sins. They're not praising the Lord. They're praising Satan. Hillsong, Hillsong United and all that garbage. Psalm 88. Psalm 88. Yes. Yes. Dead bodies cannot praise. Yes. Of course. Okay. But I, wanna, I want to suggest to you a little deeper meaning than just leaving it at the cold cadaver. There are many Christians out there that go to these stupid buildings, these pagan, satanic buildings. And what do they do? They have a they all follow pretty much the same script, don't they? They have you stand up and make you, you know, sing these stupid uh, CCM songs, and uh, they uh, manipulate your emotions, and then they ask for ties, which is not uh, pertinent for today in this dispensation, and they play the melodic music in the background, right? The dead praise not the Lord. Who are they praising? Psalm 88, verses 1 on to verse 10. O Lord, God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee, incline thine ear unto my cry. For my soul is full of troubles, and my life draweth nigh unto the grave. I am counted with them that go down into the pit. I am as a man that hath no strength. Free among the dead. If the Son shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Free among the dead. We are the Lord's free men. Free man. Encompassing, of course, you women. Okay? We are set free from the trappings and sins of this world. That doesn't mean that we don't sin. But we are set free. So we are free among the dead. Interesting, okay? I believe I've touched on this one before, okay? Free among the dead, like the slain that lie in the grave, whom thou rememberest no more, and they are cut off from thy hand. Thou hast laid me in the lowest pit, in darkness, in the deeps. Thy wrath lieth hard upon me, and thou hast afflicted me with all thy waves. Thou hast put away mine acquaintance far from me, Thou hast made me an abomination unto them. I am shut up and I cannot come forth. Mm. What happens when you give yourself over to that sin? Mm. 
Mine eye, mine eye mourneth by reason of affliction. Lord, I have called daily upon thee. I have stretched out my hands unto thee. Wilt thou shew wonders to the dead? Shall the dead arise and praise thee? Shalah. Hmm. Hmm. And Isaiah chapter 38. Isaiah chapter 38. Isaiah chapter 38, verses 15 under verse 20. What shall I say? This is Hezekiah. Hezekiah. When Isaiah said, okay, you're going to die, get your house in order. Hezekiah, you know, want, uh, wanting more life, okay, selfishly wanting more life. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Granted, at this time, he would have gone down into Abraham's bosom because the way to heaven wasn't open yet. Okay, true, true. But to be in Abraham's bosom would have been far better than to be where he was at there. Okay? Samuel, why hast thou called me up? Why hast thou disquieted me, disquieted me from my rest? You know, in Abraham's bosom. Abraham's bosom, before the way to heaven was um, uh, made open by the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, they were comforted in Abraham's bosom. Okay, remember? All right? So, and of course, Hezekiah. The Lord gave him 15 more years. What happened within the, those 15 years? One word. Manasseh. And that's all you got to say. The 15 years that the Lord added on to King Hezekiah, a godly king, someone who I am sure is in heaven, like his son, Manasseh. Absolutely. But the mercy and grace that the Lord provided for Hezekiah, how did he repay him? Manasseh. But verses 15 and verse 20 in Isaiah 38. What shall I say? He hath both spoken unto me, and himself hath done it. I shall go softly all my years in the bitterness of my soul. O Lord, by these things men live, and in all these things is the life of my spirit. So will thou recover me, and make me to live. Behold, for peace I had great bitterness, but thou hast in love to my soul delivered it from the pit of corruption. For thou hast cast all my sins behind my behind thy back. For the grave cannot praise thee. Obviously. Death cannot celebrate thee. They that go down into the pit cannot hope for thy truth. Yes, because once you die, that's it. Okay? You die in Christ. Judgment seat and go, you, you know, to be with, for it is appointed unto men once to die and after this, the judgment, okay? Uh, you die uh, in Christ. To be absent from the body is present with the Lord. Go to the judgment seat, but you're going to be with the Lord. You go down and die not saved. There's no more hope for you. There's no more hope for you. There's no hope for you if you die lost. You understand that? Okay. You're not going to get a second chance. The closest thing you can call to a second chance is the great white throne of judgment. And that ain't much of a second chance. Once you die, the decisions you made, how you have lived your life in those decisions you've made, whether as of the church of God or of someone serving Satan. What you have chosen to do, whom you have chosen to trust in your death, you will be rewarded upon. So yes, for the grave cannot praise thee, death cannot celebrate thee. They that go down into the pit cannot hope for thy truth. Because once you die and whatever, well, if you're saved or you're lost, once you're dead, that's it. Okay? Verse 19. The living, the living, he shall praise thee. As I do this day, the father to the children, 
shall make known thy ways. And make known thy truth. Excuse me. The Lord was ready to save me. Therefore will we sing my songs to the stringed instruments all the days of our life in the house of the Lord. Ephesians chapter 2 now. Yes, again. Dead people can't because once you're dead, you're dead. You're dead. You're, you're uh, uh, on the man is appointed once to die and after this the judgment. Okay? Once you die, you're dead. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. You're either going to go to heaven to be with the Lord or you're going to go to hell. One of the two. Okay? There's no middle ground. Okay? That's why it's so important for you today right now to come to the Lord on his terms don't boot the door out of the way and shout through the crack okay but Ephesians chapter 2 Ephesians chapter 2 we want verses 1 on to verse 3 come on fingers we're almost there and you hath he quickened made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins before you are saved you are dead in your trespasses and sins okay you're lost you're dead in trespasses and sins the dead praise not the Lord look at Hillsong the dead praise not the Lord those people are dead in their trespasses and sins. No. There cannot be a saved man or woman amongst those congregations of hell song. There's no way. There's no way. The Lord within them would be screaming. There's no way. There's no way, There's no way a saved, born-again, converted person spirit, soul, and body of the church of the living God could be amongst the devils of Hillsong. It's no way. No way. No way. I, I, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. The people in the church buildings, where do you send them? Where, where do you send them? Uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ through the scriptures. Yeah, but they need to go to a church building. Chapter and verse, please. Hebrews, that's for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. You gotta rightly divide the word of truth. Uh. Church building Christians are the worst. Christian church building idolaters and worshipers. They are actually worse than some of my enemies. Those, the church building worshipers, the Christian church build, they, they're horrible. They're horrible to deal with. With the unchurched. Shut up. Unchurched? Give me a break. But, you're lost, and you hath he quickened, who were dead, dead in trespasses and sins. So you're lost, you're dead in trespasses and sins. The dead praise not the Lord, neither are any that go down into silence. There's a distinction in that verse, by the way. There's a comma, neither any that go down into silence. Go down into silence, meaning the grave. Hmm. Where in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the spirit, according to the prince of the power of the air, that the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Hold your place there. You ought to know where we're going to. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Okay. Ah, <clears throat> uh, yes. Verses 3 and 4. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, Satan, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Okay? 
Where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of dis disobedience, children, children of disobedience, are not those who are of the church and living God and get messed up. No, no. Children of disobedience are children of the devil who have heard the true gospel and reject it. And those who heard the gospel and reject it, they are also children of wrath. Because remember, as it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, we are not appointed to wrath. We who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, but to obtain salvation, the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? You and I, church of the living God, you already know this. We're not appointed to wrath. So a child of disobedience is someone who hears the true gospel and rejects it. Hence, is a child of wrath. They're going to go face God's wrath. <laughs> Good luck, buddy. Okay? You hear the gospel once, dear friend, and you reject it. Oh. Among who? Verse 3. Among whom we also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath even as others. Children of wrath. Who go after the flesh. You know, go after the flesh. Children of wrath. Who are children of disobedience. Who walk according to the prince of the power of the air, Satan. You and I, church of the living God, we were once that. You and I were once dead in trespasses and sin. The dead praise not the Lord. Uh, the dead praise not the Lord. The Christians in their church buildings with their amplifiers, their drum sets and bass guitars and pianos and stuff. Uh, keyed instruments are okay. But, you know, come on. They're not worshiping the Lord. They think they are. They're actually worshiping Satan. The dead, that verse is very specific. The dead praise not the Lord. And also go to Colossians now. Of course, we would have to come here talking about this. Okay? The dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. <laughs> but for, let's read verse 18 in Psalm 115 now. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. But we will bless the Lord forever, for from this time forth and forevermore. Praise ye the Lord. The contrast between those whom are dead and praise not the Lord, like Hell Song and all these Christians in their buildings. But we, whether he slay me or whatever, I will trust in him. Colossians 3, verses 1 on to verse 7. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead. Wait a minute, Brad. Wait, time out. You said the dead praise is not the Lord. But we are dead. Let's keep reading. For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ. Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's what he said. Okay? And uh, what, is, what else does he say? Um, he who saves his life shall lose it, but he who loses his life for my sake shall find it. Okay? When Christ, who is our life, we are not our own. Christ is our life. We're dead. Are we dead in trespasses and sins? No. We are dead to trespasses and sins. We are dead to that. That. To this world. 
That's what we are dead to. We are dead to self and the world which Satan and all his temptations focuses on. That's what we are dead on to. Okay? That is what we are dead on to. The dead here being talked about in seven, verse 17 in Psalm 115 isn't talking about those who are, are dead unto the world. But those who have a name and think that they liveth. Oh, let's continue. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Yes, we, we come back with him at the second coming. We'll go up with him, okay? Mortify. Kill. Kill. Morte. Death. Yes. Mortify. Kill, therefore, your members, which are upon the earth. Fornication. I just lost my place. Uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And as I've said to you before about this verse particularly, that's all idolatry. Fornication, a form of idolatry. Uncleanness, idolatry. Inordinate affection, idolatry. Evil concupiscence, idolatry. Covetousness, but for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. And, oh, 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 Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, which we already looked in today, but Romans chapter 6, verses 1 on to verse 7. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any live any longer therein? Hmm? See, the dead here in verse 17 in Psalm 115 is not talking about those who are dead to sin and stuff like that, dead to the world. No. No. Referencing corpses, yes. Yes, but also those like, like what it said in verses 4 on to verse 7 here in Psalm 115. Those who have a false Christ. Those who have a false religion. Those who say they are and are not. The dead. Praise not the Lord. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life, being a new creature, newness of life. And remember, if you rebuild the things that you destroyed, you make yourself a transgressor. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. He that is dead is freed from sin. Yeah, because you're dead, you're not going to sin anymore. But if you are be if you are dead with Christ to that and to yourself, let's see. But what happens? What happens, right? Revelation chapter three. Revelation chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 6. And unto the angel of the church in Sardius write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God, and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast the name, that thou livest, and art dead. Christian. 
You have a name that you live, but you're dead. The dead praise not the Lord. And unto the angel of the church in Sardius write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful. And strengthen the things that which remain, that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast, and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Good warning to those of you who are of the church of the living God living in sin. Thou hast a few names even in Sardius, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess him, confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now you got to remember, the book of Revelation is not written for us today. Instruction in righteousness, absolutely. Uh, the book of Revelation is uh, pretty good for that. Doctrinally and things which uh, the book of Revelation pertain unto is for the time of Jacob's trouble. And talks also about the kingdom of heaven and the final dispensation, seventh, eternity. Eternity. And while we're in Revelation... While we're in the book of Revelation, uh, for this I, I use my, my old friend. <laughs> While we're in the book of Revelation, let's read verses 14 on to verse 19. Laodicea. And on to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Vomit. A lot of Christian, all of Christianity, I say, makes God vomit. Lukewarm, neither here nor there. Gray matter. Which is what Christianity is. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods, I have need of nothing. Oh, let's talk about our needs. Lord knows what I need. But see, seek first the kingdom of God, the spiritual, and all these things will be added to you. And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with thyself, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. And, and as it says, the final verse in Psalm 115, again, let's, let's read that final verse in Psalm 115. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You and I of the Church of the Living God, no matter what we're going through again, dear brethren, sisters, we have every reason to praise the Lord. Because this is not it. 
as I said, as we talked about in the previous video, this is not it. This is a stepping stone onto eternity with our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Whatever you're going through again, dear brethren, and there are those out there who are going through so much right now, so very much. One day, one day all that's going to be over. And then we'll have all of eternity to worship the Lord and to be in his presence and to love him without any sin, without any of the trappings of, excuse me, of the skin suit. Not, any, not having to worry with all these things of Satan because Satan and sin will be done away with. But that's not yet. But that's not yet. So, that is going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. Um, again, uh, like the previous video, I hope this is, uh, this could be a source of comfort and encouragement to you, the Church of the Living God. Um, we need we need comfort. We need encouragement to keep on fighting the good fight. Because it's really easy to see all the abundance of heresy and devils and evil out there. And all the strife and debate. And to be carried, up, carried away with it as with the whirlwind. We need to remember. We need to remember and keep our focus on our Lord Jesus Christ. But we need to remember that we have a reward waiting for us in heaven and that is Jesus Christ himself himself Jesus is our reward to be with Jesus that where he is we will be can that not satisfy you in any situation and if not, why? 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 Our, our days are like what? <sighs> dust. A breath. Because well, we're made from dust. But it's nothing. It's not going to last forever, brother, sister. <laughs> I've got to remember that. Looking at myself, it's not going to last forever. Let us take courage and let us be encouraged that when this is all said and done, we have a treasure in heaven, our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, like I said, hopefully this this be an encouragement for some of you. Like I said, I shared with you just what the Lord shared with me going through Psalm 115. Okay? This is just what the Lord shared with me, and I wanted to share it with you. So I'm gonna get this uploaded. I love you. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, pray for one another. Talk to one another. Be there for one another, brethren. And may our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, be glorified. See you in the next video.